Hello and welcome back to Calculus 2. <laughs> 2, yes, Calculus 2. Uh, we are starting chapter 7. The first lesson is mostly review of stuff that you guys know or might see new formula here and there. So we're talking about exponential functions and logarithmic functions, and we need to know derivatives, integrals regarding those particular functions. So we start by uh, reviewing, well, let's first say exponential functions, but it's calculus, right? So we start by reviewing the basic formula for derivative. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Beautiful. All right. So that is something that 100% of you know. Now, the next formula was another formula that was offered to you for simplicity, where you had this ax. So that's like e to the 3x, e to the 5x, and so on. So that one drops in front like that. And that's just by chain rule. And uh, the next formula is the boss formula that you will be using pretty much 99.999% of the time. So this is the one that says that the derivative of e to the f of x. So now you can have any function up there, not just linear function x or 2x or something. You can have x squared, you can have sine x, you can have whatever you can think of, any function. And this particular formula is the most important formula that you learn in the exponential section of this lesson. And uh, that one is, again, you know this from Calc 1, is e to the f of x times the derivative of f of x. So it's a basic chain rule formula for this. And I'm going to put the red box around this because this is extremely important. So most of your problems, 99.99999% are going to sit in that box. Obviously, both of these problems are in the box. If your f of x is x, well, then you get e to the x and derivative of x is 1. So both of these are included. So now what's new? If all of this stuff that you guys, uh, all of this stuff so far you guys saw in Calc 1, what's new for Calc 2? Well, see this e is a particular constant, right? 2.7182818284 so on, right? So how about if that's 3? What if it's 5? Can it be a half? Sure. So the general form of this equation is to have the derivative of b to the f of x, right? That's the, the general case, any base, any number. But again, the nature lines itself nicely with e, which is why most of the time you're going to use the red box your sciences, chemistry, physics, or engineering, all of that kind of stuff, most of the time. Sometimes you go with the base 10. Sound, waves, uh, you know, earthquake, also waves, pH calculations in uh, chemistry, base 10, right? So you are going to make little excursions here and there to a base 10, but most of the time it's just e everywhere. So what is the derivative here? Well, it's the same as before. You got a b to the f of x times f prime of x and times, now you have ln b. So that's new. Now I am going to put this one on a cloud because this is your calc 2 new formula. But as I said, good luck finding it pretty much anywhere <laughs> in your later work in life. So that one was for the exam? Yeah, you, that, that one you know for the exam. And, but look at this. Like, control C, control V times F prime. 
control C, control V times F prime times L and B. It's like you already know it to some extent. You just add the L and B in the end. So now I can ask you what is the derivative of two to the sine x? And you will just follow the formula. Two to the sine x, because it says repeat the same thing, right? Times the derivative of sine is cosine x times ln 2. That's it. Done. It's as simple as that. What is the derivative of 1 quarter raised to the x squared plus 6? Doesn't really matter, right? So you just have 1 quarter raised to the x squared plus 6 times the derivative of the exponent, which is 2x, times ln of 1 quarter. Now you can, you know, put this together, say 2 ln 1 quarter times x. So this is all constant, times x, and then times 1 quarter to the x squared plus 6. Simplifying it, right? So this is you working out calculus 2 formula for the general case of exponential function derivatives. And the only new feature is because your base is no longer E, you have that L and B at the end. The rest of the formula is exactly the same of what you learned in your calculus 1, uh, calculus 1 section on chain rule. Yes? So if it, we're taking the derivative of e to the f of x, how would That's the next it would be, example. Uh, it would be e to the f of x times the derivative of f of x times ln of e. But ln of e is 1, so you don't need it. You see there is no ln of e here? Yeah. Um, so since it cancels out to 1, that's kind of like a rule. You don't have to write Yeah, you don't have to write it. So most of the time in your, in your life, you will be taking the derivative of e to a function. So you say the derivative of e to the 4x squared plus x minus 1, whatever. So you copy the same e to the 4x squared plus x minus 1 times the derivative is 8x plus 1, and you're done. It's just copy the same problem, and then take the derivative of the exponent in there, and, you know, 1, 2, you're done. So most of the problems work out that way. How, here is the example. If you want to consider the motion of the so this is the ceiling, you have a little piece of a rope hanging, put a little object over here, and then you swing that to go left and right, right? What is this called? Pendulum, yes, right? What happens if you let the pendulum swing in, the, in this room? What would happen? It will swing and then and eventually stop exactly so in physics when you are learning these things for the first time they say no dampening meaning it's a perfect condition you're doing this in a vacuum there is no gravity and it's just gonna you know go like that forever but what we know is because we live on this planet due to air resistance gravity and right it is actually going to swing less and less and less and less and less and eventually stop we can do that experiment easy right if i put this one and here back hold on so if i have this one and i just put it as a pendulum and i don't touch it it stops right so because it stops um, we know that there is a term to kill it. 
and that term would be e to the negative ax. So if you have an oscillation that forever goes uninterrupted, then that's just a cosine or a sine. So if I just say cosine, let's say bt, then this one never stops, never stops as the, as the pendulum. But if I say e to the negative at cosine bt, this one stops. And its graph is going to look like this. It's, it's cosine, it's going to start there, and it's going to go wee, and then die out in time. And this would be your distance covered. So, you see what kind of a part of a function you have. Now, if I know that the distance is given by that, how do I find the velocity? The derivative. And I have to take the derivative product rule, right? And the derivative would have the exponential one, which is, again, the one that we covered there because of the e. So this is just a little application of what you're going to see now. Guys, you're going to have a whole section in differential equations just on these two lines over here. So I'm not going to go into, into detail. Those of you going into differential equations, you're going to have a whole lecture on this, on, on um, motion and uh, in space and figuring out these things for pendulum. Uh, my concern right now, because this is your prep for DFQ, if you are doing poorly in this class, your differential equation is going to be impossible or a disaster, either way. Um, you need to know to differentiate and integrate e to the x. Now it's dimensional integration. We are just going to write the integral formulas as well. So the integral of e to the x dx is e to the x plus c. Integral of e to the ax dx is e to the ax over a plus c. All of these are uh, in 4.9 in calc 1. And then you have your basic u sub regarding e's, which is integral of f prime of x e to the f of x dx is equal to e to the f of x plus c. And that's the the boss equation there obviously because that's the one that it's a u sub right you know that the u sub and uh, uh, chain rule are backwards so you can see that if you are taking the derivative of the right hand side you are getting the derivative time uh, the e to the f times the derivative on the other side so if you read it this way you have the integral if you read it this way you have the boss equation for derivatives it's the same formula yes uh, my calculus one teacher uh, forced us to use u substitution for the second equation. Uh, do we have to use u sub for the second equation? No, you no, you don't. Okay. Either way, either way, uh, it is a u sub. You you prove that formula through u sub, but if you know it, right, there is no reason to. Okay. There is no reason to suffer. Got it. Right. Well, it is all about making people happy. It, it's it's calculus. It's math, right? It's just, you know, smile all the time. So a good example of the integral uh, would be, let's say you have integral uh, x e to the x squared plus 1 dx. So this would be one of the examples. Again, this is all calc 1. The only new formula I had is the one in the cloud so far for derivatives. So uh, if you have this one, this is going to be your 5.5 uh, calc 1 question where you go and you say, u equals x squared plus 1, du equals 2x dx, and you go and say, I don't have a 2, so you fix that by putting in a 2 and a half in front, and now your integral changes into 1 half integral of e to the u du, because you have your u over here, so that's that. And then you have, let's go with this one, 2x dx, 2x dx is du. So you see that it's one-to-one -one correspondence when you stare at it enough. And now, 
get rid of these you can always go back look at the video what I underline and so on so now this integral is just one half e to the u plus c we go with a sentence I don't care about u I care about the x so one half e to the x squared plus one yeah I gotta be careful with that statement um, so one half e to the x squared plus one plus c and uh, there we go we have it done deal so this is uh, again 5.5 u sub from calculus one we are not learning any new methods for integration yet until chapter eight so we are still stuck with all of the integrals that we already know so your integral is either going to be the basic one this one over here you can take care of by u sub or you can just know the formula to put over a uh, by the way the second one works for sines and cosines as well if you have a, a cosine of ax then it's going to be sine of ax divided by a so it's the same rule right good that's the first half we just saw everything for about exponentials regarding calculus now the second part Yes. Logs, yes. That's okay. Logs. So before you um, freak out about logs, um, some of you avoided because you're just terrible people and discriminate. Logs are just an op mathematical operation between two numbers. All right? You have 2 plus 3 give you 5 addition, and you're okay with it. And then you have 5 minus 3 equals 2 subtraction. You're okay with that as well. You are okay with multiplication. You're okay with division. You're okay with squaring. And all of a sudden, you hit the log, and everything's like, ah, oh, run for your life. Guys, it's the operation. It's mathematical operation. Nothing special. If you have 2 times 3, uh, sorry, let's go with 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 minus 3 is 2, 5 minus 2 is 3, you can recover both of these using the opposite operation of subtraction. If you have 2 times 3 is 6, 6 divided by 3 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3, you are able to recover both of these by using opposite operation of division. So you have the pairing between plus and minus, you have a pairing multiplication and division. And now, two-thirds, right, two cubed, is eight. Cube root of eight is two. You're able to recover two. How do you recover three? It's a log. Log base two of eight is three. It completes this chart of backwards operation. Now, why do you discriminate against it? Because it's the only operation that doesn't have like cute symbol or something. It's letters. And for some reason, you, like, you hate letters. I don't know. So log is just an operation, just like any other operation you have between two numbers. When you combine 2 and 8 using a log, you get 3 on the other end. That's all it is, right? Um, logs and exponential functions as you can see this is exponential this is logarithmic they are inverses and opposites of each other they undo each other so you can write the conversion formula between the two worlds as a to the b equals c converts into the log of a of c equals b this is the conversion formula that helps you solve logarithmic and exponential equations. And we are going to use this formula in 7.2 to do some basic calculations. So needed for exponential and logarithmic equations. 
you know, you have polynomial equations, you have trigonometric equations, well, you have these ones as well, and it's going to be in the next section. So in like 20 minutes, we're going to be already using this. Now, uh, this section is supposed to review uh, your uh, derivatives and integration regarding these puppies. So here we go. The derivative of ln of x. Oh, let me, before that, sorry. Let me just make sure that no one is freaking about our, our, of ln of x. See, you already know what the log means. And then you have this a, which is any base. That's why I use a, right, any base. Log base e of x is written as ln x. It's just a lazy notation. It allows us to write two letters less. Right? So we write ln. When you see ln, the base is e. If there is no base, and then you have your calculator with the button capital ln. If there is no base, then it's base 10. So if it's just log x, no base, and that in your calculator is going to be capital L-O-G in the calculator. We generally use calculator to come up with these values. Yeah, you have the ln button on pretty much every calculator. Some calculators will have L-O-G, like your Texas Instruments calculators, most of them do have it. And then you have a whole bunch of calculators that actually don't have L-O-G button at all. They just have ln, because there is a way to convert between these, and you can look at that. So what is ln? ln is just a log that has a base E. It's nothing special, right? Except, as I said, our world works with E's pretty much all the time, the sciences and everything that we do. And um, since the E is everywhere, then ln is going to be everywhere because in order to solve equations that contain E on one end, you will be using ln on the other end. So, so that's that part. Now we can finally go back and take a look at the derivative of ln of x, which is the log base E. And the derivative is 1 over x. Good. So that's the basic formula you guys learned all the way back in chapter 3. Now, we are interested in the formula ln of f of x. Because if you just have x, that's a polynomial, right? This, this function x here is just a polynomial, 45 degree line. Can I replace this x with sine? Sure. Cosine? Sure. Can I put anything else other than x? Yes, we can put anything instead of this x in terms of a function. So we want the boss equation, right? Where you are allowed to plug in any function, not just function x. And that one is... This is my favorite function. I know the derivative e to the x is e to the x. Yeah, that's the cheapest one. The favorite derivative formula for me is this one. Because it's just f of x as is in the denominator and it's derivative upstairs. So, you know, you go control C, control V, and then the derivative up there. Easy. So here we have the, the equation that you are going to use a lot. Um, your chapter 8 is going to have a whole section where pretty much every problem is going to be that, right? And um, your um, differential equation is going to have a lot of this stuff. So you absolutely must know this formula. And again, this is a basic chain rule from Calc 1. This, is not, this should not be new. So what's new in Calc 2? Well, the formula where your base is not required to be e. So we are looking into the derivative of log of any base of f of x. So that's new. And um, that formula is going to be f prime of x divided by f of x. See, that's the same as above. And now you just have ln b in the denominator. So I'm going to put a cloud around this one because that's your new Calc 2 formula. 
But again, your life will be all about the red one. Right? So where do you expect the clouds? The two new formulas? On exam one, right? That's where you expect them, maybe on the final. But it's kind of hard that you're going to see them afterwards anywhere. Because as I said, 99.999999% of the problems are going to be in those red boxes. And those are the actual ones that matter in life. So now, can I find the derivative of log base 6 of, let's say, what? Square root of x? Okay, fine. Sure, why not? That's what you want. That's what you get. So now you have any base and any function. And you just follow the formula. You are supposed to copy the function as is, and that's just your square root of x. And then you have ln of the base. Well, that's just ln 6. And then you need to uh, come up with f prime. Well, your f is square root of x. So the derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 root x. That goes up there. That's your f prime. And now you can um, simplify this into 1 over 2x ln 6. Well, actually, yeah, whatever. I'll put them in any order. Uh, because you would put this over 1, and then you multiply 2 that are far apart, and you multiply two that are close by, you know, deal with the double fraction. So, um, you can now have, with this equation on the cloud, right, you can now have any base and any function, which is different than the red, because the red, your base is stuck to be E on the red one. Uh, integration for this, uh, it's only two integrals that you guys have. Uh, integral of 1 over x dx is equal to what? Nope. Ln of the absolute value of x plus c. Now some of you will be like, really? Really, you said wrong. I said ln x, and you said wrong. It is wrong, actually. <laughs> you have to have absolute value there. It's not there for decoration. Here is the reason. What is the domain of 1 over x on the left-hand side? What is the domain? Let me draw 1 over x. So what's domain? All of the negative numbers united with all of the positive numbers, right? What is the domain of ln x without absolute values? Positive Only positive numbers, right? So are these two domains the same if you don't put absolute value? Hell no, right? Because if you have this on the left, and you have that on the right without absolute value, over here you can plug in negative 2, over there you can't. Right? Well, what kind of equal sign is going to hold between those two worlds? Right? If you're allowed to do something here, and you're not allowed to do something like that on the other side. So absolute value is not optional here. Absolute value creates another branch like that when you graph it and adds the missing domain, which is negative infinity to zero. So now, when you put the absolute values here, the domain on both sides is the same, and you can have the, right, so, so you can plug in negative two on one side. Like zero, you still can't use, right? You can't use zero on the left. You can't use zero on the right. No one disputes that. It's the negative numbers that are the issue. So, when you are taking the derivative, right, we don't care about absolute values because you are going from the smaller domain into a larger domain, so that's okay. 
But in this case, it's very important to have absolute values. And um, you have to you have to have it. Now, the boss equation, obviously, now the, the one that is very important is going to be the integral of f prime of x over f of x dx, which gives us the ln of absolute f of x plus c. That is the Boss equation. And this is the one that you are going to use a lot in Calc 2 and differential equations. Um, and you have seen this. This is your u sub, obviously, that gives you the ln answer. I think, did, did we have the example of this already? Or uh, do they have this? I don't know. Let's go. Integral of x um, divided by 2x squared plus 6 dx. Typical example, right, where you say, oh, it's a u sub. u equals 2x squared plus 6. du equals 4x dx. Well, I have x dx. I need 4x dx, so fix it. Put the 4 and a quarter in front. And now the whole thing changes into one quarter integral of du over u. Because 4x dx, as you can see, is du. And the entire denominator is just u. If you are not comfortable with this way, right, of... Uh, if, if you're not comfortable with writing it this way, you can just say 1 over u du is the same thing because it's 1 times du is du and um, this is clearly 1 quarter ln of absolute u plus c and now we go with I don't care about u I care about the x so 1 quarter ln absolute 2x squared plus 6 plus c at the end and uh, that would be the full problem. Now, something like this, you should have on your final exam for Calc 1. This problem is 100% 5.5. There is nothing Calc 2 on this problem. This is your final exam Calc 1 problem. And it will be used later for partial fraction decomposition in Chapter 8 for inverse Laplace transforms in differential equations and so on. So this stuff, when you, when you have the U, do the U sub, uh, U sub for ln this way, it's going to be back. And, um, you know, the sooner you review this and know it, the better. So I think the first time this is going to be, you know, heavily used is, I believe it's 8.4 or 8.5. .8 so for our exam too. So maybe you want to start this one along with its formula and uh, say the first time we play with this is going to be 8.5. And you're going to use it so much, you're going to be PhD in this thing, this one particular formula, if you're doing well. That's it. That's, that's 7.1. We are supposed to review derivatives and integrals for exponential and logarithmic functions. Um, so now we'll take a short break. After we uh, come back, say like 300 seconds or so, um, we'll do 7-2, word problems and exponential models.